All right, so now that you have a little bit of an idea of how uh, auditory information is sensed via these hair cells within the cochlea of your inner ear, which is the receptors, then we're gonna move into next how this information is relayed through the thalamus. As I mentioned, auditory information travels through the thalamus. You have visual information travels through the thalamus uh, via the lateral geniculate nucleus, and auditory information travels through the thalamus via the medial geniculate nucleus. So uh, the lateral geniculate nucleus is for visual information, and the medial geniculate nucleus is for auditory information. So here's the cochlea, okay? So the, um, here's your auditory nerve, and so they synapse in the ipsilateral cochlear, cochlear nuclei. So here are your cochlear nuclei right here. And so the information is going to come in here, and this is in your hindbrain. So the, so the comes, information comes in from the ear, and it synapses here, which basically means that um, here your auditory nerve connects, connects with other axons and other neurons. Okay, that's what it means when it says it synapses. So it break has a sort of a break point here in the cochlear nuclei, okay? And from there, many projections lead to the superior olives. So you have them on both sides, right here. And then from there, axons project to the superior colliculi. And so from here, the uh, cochlear nuclei to the superior olives. And then it goes from the superior olives to the superior colliculi via the lateral lemniscus to the inferior colliculi. So basically it goes, it travels uh, from here up, here's your lateral lemniscus, to your, up in here to your inferior colliculus, right in here, okay? Axons then project from the inferior colliculus to the medial geniculate nuclei, right in here. Okay, so the main thing that you need to get through this, this is where you get to start to have information that is combined from multiple ears so that you can then again need depth perception. So you need to calculate depth perception with your ears or use your ears to locate uh, where a sound is coming from in space. And in order to do that, you need to have slight uh, differences again between your ears. And so some of these early stages of where this information goes are particularly important for this processing occurring quickly. So the lateral and medial superior olives, for example, react to differences in what is heard by the two ears, okay? So the medial is arrival time differences and the lateral is amplitude differences. So if we go back to this here, okay, then you hear the superior olives, you have both of these, your medial one, Medial should be what on the inside, okay? And your lateral is over here. So your medial responds to arrival time differences and your lateral to amplitude differences. So these are some of the first times that this two information is coming in from both ears. You need to combine this information quickly so that you can orient towards it. So again, main thing you're gonna wanna know is the information comes in here and the first place that it starts to be combined and parceled out for where it is coming in from space and how loud it is, is the superior olives. So we are all already starting to pick apart the incoming and sound information for both where it's coming from and a basic idea of what it is. And so this all happens before this information even gets to the cortex. So this is an idea of how this works. Okay, you have the bird that's singing, and you're going to have slight differences in arrival time of this information to your ears. And so you might even have slight differences in amplitude. This ear, for example, is going to have an earlier arrival time, and that maybe a slightly higher amplitude or so higher sound than this ear, over this ear over here, which is going to have a uh, later arrival time and maybe a lower amplitude or a softer sound. The extra distance that the, t uh, the sound might have to travel, this information starts to be combined in the superior olives. So very early in processing so that you can react to this information as quickly as possible. 
So then after we pass, we move from the receptor hair cells and we pass through the thalamus and, and again on our way to the thalamus, then we move up here into the primary sensory cortex and the secondary and association cortices. So where is the primary sensory cortex for auditory information? It's in the temporal lobes. The sense is varied by lobes. So the occipital lobe is for vision and the temporal lobe processes auditory information. So again, we move here from our cochlea um, up to our superior olives, which begin to combine information. And then if you'll see, you see the sort of map that we have information that comes in from both sides. It travels up here, okay? Then it makes it to the thalamus. And then from the thalamus, then here it is projected out to the primary auditory cortex on each side of the brain. So axons project from the inferior cochlei to the medial geniculate nuclei of the thalamus. Thalami, thalamus neurons then project to the primary auditory cortex. So this is the basic pathway, okay? From everything comes through the thalamus, projects to the thalamus, and then out to the primary auditory cortex. So your primary auditory cortex is right here. This, all of this makes up your temporal lobes. This is your temporal lobe over here, and this is your temporal lobe over here. This right up here is your parietal lobe, and this right up here is your parietal lobe. Little region right here, your primary auditory cortex, corresponds to this point right here um, to give you sort of another view of the brain. So auditory signals are sent to this primary auditory cortex, and then they are conducted to two areas of the association cortex, okay? Similar to how visual information arrives at the primary visual cortex and then is sent out again for dorsal and ventral pathway. We have two, we have a sort of a similar arrangement where we have parallel processing that's going on for auditory information. So it's sent here and then it's passed here and here, okay? So this is the anterior auditory pathway. It's the anterior auditory pathway because it's traveling towards your front, okay? This is your posterior auditory pathway. Remember, your posterior refers to behind. So the anterior auditory pathway is likely more involved in identifying sounds, what they are, and the posterior auditory pathway it may be involved in locating sound more where sounds are in space. And similarly, this likely connects with visual information, because remember, you have the visual information is sent here. Um, if it's sent to the temporal lobes, it's what it is out over this way. And if it's sent up dorsally to the prior lobes, it's sort of um, how you interact with it. And there's an element of sort of where it is in space. So visual information with regards to how you would interact with it, where it is in space is sent up to the parietal lobes and auditory information is the same. Where it is in space is sent here to your parietal lobes for additional processing. And then what it is might be more involved up here in terms of retrieving language elements or retrieving language related information in some parts of the frontal lobes. So the main things to take away from this the functional organization of the auditory cortex is how sound waves are received, how they are amplified, and how these mechanical sound waves are transduced into waves within the fluid, and you have these hair cells that sort of sit within this fluid, and as this fluid moves, then the hair cells move, and the movement of the hair cells in particular direction causes graded potentials which can result in in uh, the firing of an action potential. So once these receptors fire and result in an action potential, this information is sent down to the auditory nerve and it is then first combined in your superior olives where it begins to look at differences in the ear for loudness and timing. And then it is sent to the thalamus and after it is sent to the thalamus, it is then processed here, sent to the primary auditory cortex. And then this information starts to be processed more, and you're gonna figure out what it is that you're actually listening to. Pathways generally are thought to extend anterior, to determine what it is, and then determining where the sound is in space, it starts to um, extend posterior to the parietal lobes. So those are some of the main takeaways.